Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Uh, you've heard the expression conspicuous by their absence, okay? Well, I'm beginning to think that one particular matchroom fighter is very conspicuous by his absence, and that is Conor Ben. <clears throat> because we know the story about Conor Ben failing his drug test, banned by, well, not banned, well, yeah, essentially suspended, shall we say, by the British Boxing Board of Control, that great long soap opera that never seemed to end. Um, but until relatively recently, um, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom were constantly banging the drum for Ben, constantly saying, you know, this is a, we, we need him out there. But I understand why, because Matchroom actually picked up Ben when he was a raw kid and he's had his debut and his entire career actually with Matchroom and they've invested a lot of money in him. And he did show for sections of his career, he showed a lot of promise. Um, I mean, he's 27 now, so he's been with Matchroom for, I think he turned pro at 19. So that's eight years. Yeah, he turned pro 2016, so eight years ago, 19 he was. Um, and he was looking the part before this drugs ban, wasn't he? You know, I, I know that he was facing B, B minus fighters, people who were semi retired like Chris Van Heerden and Chris Algieri. And he won a decision over Adrian Granados, stopped Samuel Vargas in one round, premature stoppage, but. Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. Decision over Sebastian Formello, who isn't a bad European level fighter. So there was progress being made, and then boom, you know, failed drug test, the rest is history. Now, it, the Van Heerden fight was his, his last fight before the drug test, failed drug test. And that was in 2022. In 2023, he made a little comeback uh, over in Orlando in the US, and he beat um, Rodolfo Orozco, who, by the way, <laughs> rather oh, the irony of it all, he failed a drugs test afterwards. But this was that, that young Mexican kid um, who had a flashy record. And, of course, we were thinking, unknown Mexican fighter. I mean, the kid took some punishment. Um, and we're thinking, can Ben hit that hard? He's hitting him flush, and the kid ain't going anywhere. He did look quite big, Orozco, for the weight. Um, and then... Earlier this year, February this year, Ben had a second fight over in America. This one was in Las Vegas in one of those, in some, looked like a casino ballroom or something. Um, he fought Peter Dob Dobson, who was undefeated in 16. Dobson, a very slow fighter, no speed on the man, but quite crafty, quite durable. Ben won a 12 round decision. 10 rounds over Orozco, 10 rounds over Orozco, 12 rounds over Dobson. So 22 rounds. He's had 22 rounds since um, April of 22, which was the uh, Van Heerden fight. 22 rounds since the failed drugs test. But suddenly everything went quiet regarding Conor Ben. Suddenly Hearn didn't appear to be push, push, pushing him. And I wonder how much of this, well, there are several things. I, there, I know that one particular signing of Hearn's must have impacted on this. But also the the fact that Ben surely uh, surely Herm will have learned that he handled the whole Ben thing wrong, you know it was a constant and Ben himself handled it very very wrong. It was a case of someone who came across as being very entitled and very you know demanding and someone who thought he was a bigger star than he actually was overseas. Even within the UK, I think people turned against him. But the signing that I mentioned a moment ago for Hearn is probably what's swayed Hearn's head in another direction. And that, of course, is uh, the signing of Jerron Ennis. Because as soon as Jerron Ennis was signed, Hearn didn't seem that interested in Ben anymore. OK, I, I don't have inside information, but it did strike me. As, I mean, that would be an obvious matchup, in-house matchup, Ennis versus Ben. I know, the, I know I th who I think would win and win big. And it ain't Conor Ben, uh, but even if you if you look at other match fights, I mean, I think Cyrus Patterson, Pattinson rather, and Pat McCormick, I think they're welterweights and they're with Matchroom or Matchroom have had dealings with them anyway. So you'd think that Ben, even if he has to go overseas, even if the situation with the British Boxing Border Control is not being resolved, you would think that Hearn. I'm not saying cashing in on Ben. Ben's still 27. He might have a bit of fight left in him. But if he can't 
um, if if it's going to take even longer to resolve this this boxing ball, the the BB, BFC issue, you would think that Ben would be kept busy. Um, okay, he fought in February. What are we in now? July, late July, or the, the latter part of no, latter part of June. Um, I don't know. I I I do wonder whether. So we got what are we going? March, April, May. And most of June has gone by. Okay, so four months. I would have thought if Conor Ben is the, it remains the big um, potential breakout star that Eddie Hearn was telling us all along he, he would be and should be, um, he would have been kept busy, not sat on the shelf. Now, he could be injured or something. There could be some other reason. I don't know. But he's he's got to, if he wants to, move his career forward. I know he's only 27, but the train seems to have stalled, put it that way. And I just wonder whether Hearn, like I said a moment ago, I wonder whether Hearn is thinking, do you know what? I've done all I can for him. Because I mentioned the 22 rounds that he'd done against Dobson and Orozco, but they're not, he was hitting those fighters flush and he, well, they weren't budging. They weren't going anywhere. Um, is that indicative of the fact that he was on PEDs and is now isn't? His punch power is diminished. Um, I mean, let's not forget um, that although Ben is a welterweight, Hearn has, you know, some very good fighters at 140 at the moment. Um, he has Sabriel Mateus, who lost to Liam Paro at the weekend. Um we're talking about, you know, a, a still, still a marketable guy. Okay, he lost. But at the same time, you know, there's still money to be made there. He's still marketable in Puerto Rico. Um, he's still got a 100% KO record. That's a very marketable guy. There's Regis Progre is still in the mix. Richardson Hitchens is coming up. Um, I know Montana Love's lost a couple of times, but Okay. If he wants to move to welterweight, stick him in with Ben. But the 140 fighters, Leo Liam Paro, I think he's signed with Hearn now. He, he's talking about taking him over to Australia. Jack Catterall is still in the mix, you know, having having again beaten or at least officially beaten him once. Josh Taylor, Dalton Smith. Uh, you know, we got some we got some good fighters at 140. So there's a lot of sweets in the bag. And I just think that Eddie's probably thinking, you know what, I, I put all this effort into Connor, Connor and he's, yeah, he's a good fighter. He's marketable. He's marketable. But of course, you need a dance partner. And the big fight with Eubank Jr., that seemed to disintegrate, probably because, well, supposedly because J Eubank Jr. was demanding too much money. You, what Eubank Jr. is doing, I do not know. I <laughs> don't even go there. But in terms of wanting to make money, I would have thought it was an obvious match up because of the Ben Eubank name, catch weight fight. Now that that seems to have evaporated, where next for Conor Ben? Um, because he, he can fight. But maybe Eddie just hasn't got shows in, in jurisdictions which are prepared to go against, against the board, the British board, and sanction a fight with Conor to give him a license. There are states where he can get licenses if he goes to the south, uh, Texas is infamous for giving out licenses like uh, candy um, or we could go to obscure parts of Europe but does Hearn want to put on shows in these areas especially with the Saudi money where, where everything is now every, everything's literally in boxing terms looking towards Mecca you know <laughs> Riyadh seems to be that's, that's where the Mecca is for boxing now um, is it possible that Conor Ben could end up on a Saudi show. I don't know. I don't know. I suppose, well, everything, anything is possible. But would uh, our friend, the excellent Turkey, go for that? Hmm. You need a dance partner. I don't know. And how would, you know, with this new relationship between Hearn and Frank Warren, would Warren be, be prepared to put, for, to have Ben in with, one of his fighters, I don't know, maybe. I mean, whenever there's money concerned, if it makes, you know, pound note sense, it makes sense in any kind of ethical way because 
Hearn and Warren are the bottom line is they're money men. They want money. They want to earn, a, you know, as much as possible for themselves. They say, well, it's for the fighters and we take a cut. Okay, fair enough. But it is all about money. Um, I don't trust promoters, you know. Some are good promoters, some are bad promoters. Don King put on some incredible shows in the 1990s. But you won't meet a bigger scumbag. <laughs> Horrible man. <laughs> anyway, just a few thoughts on Conor Ben. Where is he? What's happening? His career just seems to have stalled. He's in kind of limbo. I don't know. You you, you tell me what you think. Comments below and I'll have a read. Um, and yeah, hit the like button if you like the video. Thank you very much for that. And also, if you're new to the channel, you could subscribe and spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. That'd be fantastic too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks as always. And I'll get you later. Bye for now.